Here's a quick trivia question. What does the disgraced former owner of the Clippers and 2010 NBA Rookie of the Year have in common? If you didn't read the title of this video, you'd be hard pressed to find any similarity between Donald Sterling and Tyreek Evans. But one that stands out is the fact that both these men are serving lifetime bans from the NBA. That's right. Moving forward, those guys will be equally as involved in the daily happenings of the NBA as you are. And you're not even billionaires or athletically gifted six foot five guards. The NBA is a pretty lenient league in most cases. You can hit a dude in the stands with a right hook, a la Ron Artest, and still return to earn a living playing basketball. You can shove a player while sitting courtside in the biggest series of the year, like Warriors minority owner Mark Stevens, and only get slapped with a one-year ban. You can even choke out your head coach when he insults your passing ability and rejoin the NBA family, looking at you, Latrell Sprewell. But there are some offenses the league simply cannot abide by, and they will slap you with a permanent ban. These reasons range from shaving points to repeatedly failing drug tests. As of 2019, there are 16 men who are banned from stepping foot in an arena when an NBA game is taking place. Here are their stories. Of the 16 blacklisted men, nine of them are on the list for gambling reasons. It's certainly worth noting this isn't a recent issue, as all nine last played from 1950 through 1970, which were apparently big years to shave points from college games. In 1951, the NBA banned its first people ever from the league after catching wind of a massive college basketball scandal known as the CCNY point shaving scandal. It was revealed players from seven different schools, including the University of Kentucky and City College of New York, had taken money from organized crime groups to play poorly in the biggest games of the season. Now you would think a school named City College of New York wouldn't need to be paid to be awful at getting buckets. But the 50s were a weird time, kids. The mobsters would bet on the underdog, knowing that they had paid off the favorite to choke the game away. In the end, 33 players were convicted of getting paid to take a dive. The most interesting part of this story might actually be how the scandal was finally revealed. Junius Kellogg, the center for Manhattan College at the time, was a freshman when some men approached him with $1,000 and told him all the money would be his if he purposely tanked his next game. Kellogg turned down the money and it wasn't because he's a rich man. He was working at a frozen custard shop close to school and making minimum wage. But he still refused the cash and alerted the authorities instead. Put your hands in the air! Now you might be thinking, Junius is a rat. And you might be right. But Kellogg had integrity and conviction. A uh, man of the people or something. So props to Kellogg for being the most honest dude in this entire documentary. By the end of the entire saga, seven men had been handed a lifetime ban for their role in the scandal. Gambling ended up landing two more guys in the NBA's bad side. Jack Molinas, who was actually a coach at the center of the aforementioned scandal, managed to dodge the ban for three years. Eventually, he was caught and ended up in jail. He was banned from the league, but that wasn't the end of his story. It was far more nefarious than that. Our pal Jack was executed in his backyard by people who were heavily suspected to have mob ties. On top of that, Molina's business partner was beaten to death less than a year prior. Don't mess around with bookies, kids. And if you do, for the love of God, quit while you're ahead. Roger Brown, an ABA legend, had heavy ties to Molina's. He was banned too, but not executed, bringing our total to nine. Of the remaining seven banned players, six of them are banned for failing drug tests. In the 21st century, the league banned John Drew, Chris Washburn, Roy Turpley, and Richard Dumas for multiple violations of the league's drug policy. Drew and Washburn were the first to go, victims of the 1980s cocaine craze and the subsequent NBA crackdown. One has to especially remember with them, while society is far more polite to users of drugs in the modern age, often wanting to help instead of ostracize, if anyone was involved with cocaine back in the 80s and not trotting about Studio 54, they were considered bad eggs. Tarpley was next. He tallied his first DUI playing for the Mavericks and was found again boozing heavily. Thankfully, the troubled center found success playing basketball elsewhere and still managed to carve out a career overseas. Dumas spent his entire life dealing with addiction and failed three drug tests while playing in the league. Eventually, the NBA had enough and banned him. He was eventually arrested for stealing cigarettes and alcohol from an Air Force base and remains in prison today. Moving on to some recent names that viewers are certainly familiar with, Tyreek Evans and OJ Groceries Mayo. For these two guys, there is still hope. 
Although they are both banned for multiple drug violations, there have been several players who have been on the permanently banned list and gotten reinstated to active status. For example, Chris Birdman Anderson is a good example of a guy who worked his way back to the league and eventually won a championship. Mayo might be a little too old to return to the league, but hopefully we haven't seen the last of Reek in an NBA uniform. He can apply for reinstatement in 2021. Also, more importantly, hopefully they can just turn their lives around. Basketball is cool and it's how they make all their money, but none of that does them any good if they're not put together. That leaves one man. And I think I speak for everyone when I say, we would be just fine never seeing this guy in an NBA arena ever again. You know who it is. Donald Sterling. He was banned when he was caught spewing racist comments to his girlfriend, who is black. The irony was not lost on the NBA community, who quickly rallied to boot Sterling from the Clippers. In 2014, Commissioner Adam Silver banned Sterling and forced him to sell his team. It actually ended years and years of decades of Sterling using his power in awful, bigoted ways. This was the final of far too many straws Sterling was allowed to drink from. Nevertheless, Sterling's exodus was historical. The league was free of a gross racist and put a spotlight on Steve Ballmer, who seems to be perpetually hopped up on something, just in a good way this time. Huge thanks to all who watched and to the tremendous team at Clutch Points who produced this. I'm Frank Smith. You can follow me at FMS underscore Frank Smith and follow Clutch Points at Clutch Points. Another side note, if you're not subscribing to us on YouTube, you're missing out. All of our best content is here. If you love our pages on IG and Facebook, I can guarantee you'll love the YouTube channel. Until next time.